Good day, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have another of our trailblazer from the North Union Secondary School. Our guest is none other than educator Mr. Frank Jones. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel if this is your first time. Former principal of the North Union Secondary School in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, please help me, and it gives me great pleasure and honor to have Mr. Frank Jones with us. Mr. Jones, welcome to the platform, and it's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, if you can take us back to your humble beginning when the thought of teaching came to your mind. Okay, now that's way, way back, many moons ago, you know, around the year 1980, 1981. Now, at that time, I was into agriculture, you know, and I had my subjects and someone said to me, Frankie, you have your subjects. Why don't you try to get a, a profession? Try, try to get into a profession. Because in those days, you know, I had the lands in South Rivers and it was difficult, very difficult. So I considered it. And I decided to apply for a teaching job. I was fortunate enough to get that teaching job to be appointed as a teacher, a probationary assistant teacher at the Lomans Winwood Anglican School. Mm -hmm. Now, in those days, we were paid $280 per month. Wow. Yes, and I was living in Bible. So very often I would be walking from Bible to Lomans Winwood Anglican School to teach. Whenever I get a lift, which was very rarely, I would get up there when folks are just opening their doors to come outside to brush their teeth with a cup and toothbrush and so forth. I was that early. Because punctuality has always been one of my life. True, true. Yeah, so I spent two years at the Low Mansion at American School, and then I was offered a job at Barclays Bank at the time. Just around that time, I had applied to get into the teacher's college. And I had an interview on a certain day. Now, on that day, I was also asked to come into Barclays Bank. So I walked into the bank, first of all. And when I got in there, you know, I thought about it and I said, nah. I just had it out, out to Annesville to the teacher's college, had my interview, and there I was, into the teacher's college. And I have never regretted one minute of it. Wow. From what I have seen, what I have gone through, and the lives I have touched, mm -hmm. it is more than worthwhile. And if I have to make that decision again tomorrow to live my life all over again, it will be teaching without hesitation. Right. So, so, so I'm, 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 I'm fortunate to, um, I'm glad that you made that decision because I'm fortunate to have been your student, one of your students. And um, I just want to say at this point in time that how much, you know, I, I can say I, but I have to say we because um, throughout the, the, the polls that we had um, concerning you know, teachers who were being, who, who touched lives at the North Union Secondary School. Um, your name came through unanimously um, amongst us that, that Mr. Jones, um, if you have to mention four people, Mr. Jones has to be in it. And I just want to say, use this opportunity to say, you know, thank you for all that you have done, you know, for us as a teacher, one who I can say definitely took pride in, in whatever he did. Your your passion for teaching showed when we were in your class. And like I, I, I've had other conversation with, with other teachers that um, you were not selfish and you didn't have favorite. If you did have favorite, it really didn't show. Your interest was really to have us, the students at, at heart. Indeed. You know, so tell us, tell me something um, about it, because 
you like you said, you could have gone to the banking system. So yes. what about the teaching that that had you had you um interest at heart at that time? Okay, well, at that particular time, when I I'm being very, very honest here, when I walked into the bank, I had a problem with the sort of closed environment, the sort of impersonal environment, and honestly, the air conditioning. I said, I will not want to be locked into an air-conditioned room. I prefer to be dealing with people because I'm a people person. So I thought it a better opportunity to be dealing with people through teaching rather than through the banking system. So that really shaped my choice. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it I'm just going to slip back here a little bit because you said that you were what you call a probationary um, teacher. If I'm right, what, how, how you became a probationary teacher? Because it is different also from being like one of those qualified teachers. And I, I think if I'm right, it was back in the days. There is a reason, but for the purpose of our audience, there's a reason why it was called probationary teacher. Okay, okay. So once you start teaching, once you're appointed you are more or less on probation. So you're called a probationary assistant teacher. So you're on probation for two years. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, it, so, sorry, was that from um, the school events ranking or it was from the, the GCRC? It was based on my O-level passes. Okay, okay, all right. That's just where I want to get clear. So, so then I went to the teacher's college and once I graduated, I was successful, then I was qualified. So then I was promoted to the rank of qualified assistant teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's then uh, when I exited the teacher's college, I was appointed at the North Union Secondary School. That was in 1985. Right. What was the state of the school at that time uh, for North Union as, as a secondary school? We know in 1985, prior, a few years prior to that, it was called a junior secondary school. But what right. was the state when Frank Jones got there in terms of um, recognition amongst okay. the other schools? Okay, at that time, the North Union secondary school was still growing. And it was a stalwart in certain areas, for example, in the area of culture, because we had Alban Henry, may, may he rest in peace, you know, he was a trailblazer when it, when it comes to cultural events, you know, his right. songwriting, his playwriting, and so forth. So North Union was well recognized in that regard, but it did not have the recognition that it had a few years afterwards, because as I said, the school was still growing. We were just about getting into CXCs, which required a different sort of approach and a different sort of student shaping. And then we had to get the parents aligned so that they throw their weight behind the school. So although the school was at a creditable level, there was a lot to be done when I got there. Mm -hmm. Right. So... If I can recall also that um, you were not only instrumental in academics, you were also instrumental in the cultural part of it. You know, you did a little um, uh, folk music with us and, uh, you know, music in general. You were, you know, one of the jack of all trades. Yes, I was into dance, you see, because I believe that education should cater for the entire person. Mm. And I cannot subscribe to a boring educational diet. Mm -hmm. So we had the dance, we had the singing, we had the plays, we had the concerts. Because to me, when you look back at your secondary school life, you should say, yes, I have made progress. Yes, mm -hmm. I have gained a qualification. But very importantly, you should say, I enjoyed it. True, true. You know, and through things like dance and singing and so forth, 
there are aspects there that would really fine tune people's discipline. I mean, it's not just the academics that would shape you, but also the co-curricular activities that would contribute. So I, I took a holistic approach, you know, in towards including the co-curricular activities with the academics so that we had a rounded graduate. Mm -hmm. And for, for that, I'm saying um, you have touched so many lives. Um, and I'm going to interject right here and, and, and say something that might surprise you because it came from a student that, that gave me her personal um, encounter with you. I can't even call her name. I don't know if she's going to kill me. It was said that there was a, you had a choir from the class was going on stage to sing and she was part of that choir. Mm -hmm. And um, she, a lot of people, a lot of the other students didn't want her to be in the choir. And she told me she deliberately came late that morning because the choir was performing. And she, although she came late, she was there when the choir was about to go on stage that morning. Mm -hmm. And she refused to go and you were signaling to her to come up, come up, come up. And she refused to go because of the way the other students in the choir treated her. And at the end of it, you you went to her and you say, why didn't you come up? And she said, oh, I was late. And then you shook your head and you said, okay. But you knew you knew why she didn't come up. But you just made her feel comfortable by saying, it's okay, I understand. Um, I don't know if you can recall that student, but um, you don't have to mention the name, but right, um, right. that moment, that moment itself, um she she couldn't help but talking about your approach, how you made her feel accepted at that time. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm humbled by that, you know, but uh that is my, my general approach. You know, uh from 1985 on, you know what I insisted on. The beginning the middle and the end of everything I do was discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. And I am not talking here about discipline where you beat people into submission. I'm talking about producing a disciplined person, a person who would know that there is a time for everything. Sure. So when you're, when you're supposed to play, you play. And when you're supposed to walk, you walk. Because, see... I was not preparing a student, preparing my students just to pass an exam. Right. I was preparing my students so that I can have a Molten CS interviewing me with competence. Mm -hmm. sure, I sure. can have Kiana reaching out to me with respect and that humility and at the same time, a command of what she's doing. Mm -hmm. See, when students leave the sheltered environment of the school walls within the school walls and you go out there there is where you realize that you have to be a disciplined person in order to progress and when i see students making progress in real life now i say thank god i insisted on that discipline and with the discipline, you know, came the love, you know, my love for my students. It was never a selfish endeavor. True, and true. although I loved my students and my heart was involved in it, I operated on principle. So rather than pulling from the top and creeping off those who were known as good or bright, I chose to push from the bottom so everybody was elevated. And I really think that is what education should do elevate everyone rather than creaming off from the prop and leaving those who are struggling to fall off. Right. And, and let me echo those sentiments because um, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't a, a well-disciplined um, student in terms of, um, you know, I didn't give a lot of trouble, but I, I you know, missed a few classes here and there. But um, just like you and uh, my other uh, past teacher there, Mr. Johnson, who interviewed me. Um, I don't think I've ever suffered under the hands of Mr. Jones as in terms of uh, discipline. 
Um, I think I, I had the respect because of the respect that you gave us. I think I had that mutual respect for you in terms of um, can't, don't give any trouble because you never really singled out a group of people who you're going to pay attention to. You paid attention to every one of us. And mm -hmm. you made sure, I, I think you were one of them who made sure that um, we understood what you were teaching before you even move on. Like, you know, um, in most cases, some some teachers, they're, they're, uh, they're a bit um, impatient. You know, yeah. so they, they, yeah, they don't have time for some school students and, and stuff like that. So um, I, I consider you as, as very special um, to, to look, uh, you know, to look about our interest at, at that time. Um, Mr. Jones, if I only have to add another to your, to your, uh, to your accolades, if I have to, if I can say that, um, you were not only like prolific in, in whatever you do, integrated sciences and, you know, giving extra, taking the time out to give extra classes to make sure we, we were well prepared for the CXCs and GCEs. Um, your neatness of appearance was one of the first things when I got in contact with you. Your neatness of appearance, the way you carried yourself. I remember clearly, and up to this day, I still have this, uh, I don't know what you call it here. You used to carry this this piece of hair right here. Right? And that was for me, that was your trademark, right? But I also remember that um, I would see you after the, you know, after lunch, I would see you with your toothbrush in your hand. Going <laughs> to, <laughs> I'm telling you those little things, and it's yes. amazing. Like it's amazing how a student can um just imitate or, or patronize you know something mm -hmm. that they saw when they were small. And I go like, man, I would like to have that little piece of thing there. <laughs> 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 you, know, you, you never know that that students exactly. Are, you know, yeah, think. exactly. You know, but there was this little man. I must say, I must say at this point in time also, man, like you, you, you still look like uh, the Mister Jones back then. The, the, maybe you were twenty five. I don't know, 21, 25, 25 years old. Yeah, you still, uh, you still have that, you know, small physique, and 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 you know, life is. I can see life is good. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, I, it all comes down to my discipline in life, too, because every day I'm on the tarmac exercising. I watch what I eat. I sleep when I'm supposed to sleep. Mm -hmm. That I don't put anything in my body that is not that is offensive. You know, right. so I, God has given me one body. I take good care of it. You know, it's, all, uh, it's all part of my discipline in lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your years at North Union Secondary School, like we talked about, you know the school wasn't um it it was making progress and stuff like that um what are some of the the events that or some of the progress that that were made that that you you can recall at the north union secondary school during your time okay now if i could if i should look at now i see education first of all as a trichotomy okay I see the student, the connection between the student, the teacher, and the home, with the community coming in there, the Ministry of Education coming in. But the three main points, the student, the parent, sorry, the student, the home, and the teacher. Now, one of the things that we, that I can take pride in, is along with Mr. Williams, building a strong PTA, Strong Parent Teachers Association. And not only building that Parent Teachers Association, but getting parents to know what was required of the students, what was required of the teachers, and what was required of them as parents. And once you let people know what is required, because students knew what was required, teachers knew what was required, Parents knew what was required. And once you know the power of that, of that knowledge, when you join hands, there was hardly any force that could have stood against the progress of the North Union Secondary School. So that's one of the things that I take pride in. And let me, let me just backtrack a little bit and say here that 
Mr. Westwood Williams will always be in my praises because I spent most of my years at the North Union Secondary School working with him. Now, I was deputy principal with Mr. Westwood Williams for, well, between 1991 and 1995, and then he went to study, and I took over as acting principal until 1997, and then he returned. But even when Mr. Williams was there, there were times when a lot of folks thought that Mr. Jones was the principal. Mm -hmm. And that is because, that is, that is actually a plus for Mr. Williams. I owe my progress and my development as a school administrator to him. Because he gave me the room, the validation, he expressed the confidence in me that I could really expand my wings and build my muscles as an administrator. He always expressed that confidence. If he had to question any of my decisions, he would call me to the office and he would ask, Mr. Jones, why this? And very often I explain to him the reason why I made that decision. And he will just, he had a way of nodding his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had a way. And sometimes he'll put his finger at his chin and he would nod his head. <laughs> so I, I cannot stop singing his praises, you know, the kind of support that I got from him. So anybody coming to the school asking about the curriculum and support, you said to them, go and ask the young man. You know, mm -hmm. that is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I, I really owe a lot to him uh, for the growth, my growth and development at the school and my ability to contribute to the development and achievement of my students. Now, another uh, aspect that I am really proud of is getting into the CXCs, because at that time, when I, when I got there in 1985, we did integrated science for the very first time. Mm. I remember I entered 10 students, 11 students, and we had one pass. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I said, no, it's not going to happen again. And that is because CXC at that time, they were having some teething problems also. Mm. So from the next year, I really got down to it, and we had 100% passes from the following year all the way through to the time I left the North Union Secondary School. We also had a struggle with biology. Mr. Ken Johnson was teaching biology before I took it over. And again, biology was seen as a hard subject, again, teething problems, problems from CXC, and we were really struggling with biology. But once I took the biology over and I really got into the guts of CXC, our students really saw that we started getting grades one, grade ones and twos and classing with the other established schools and so on. And, but my greatest achievement, as I would have mentioned before, is walking into an office and seeing a past student serving me, walking into the hospital or visiting the hospital and seeing a North Union Secondary School student pass you and as a nurse and seeing our dear Grace Walters pass you and as a hospital administrator, hmm. seeing our Sakiana belching out her singing on Sunday mornings, praising the <laughs> Lord because ministry is very important, Elton and Rob, and I can go on and on and on and on. My joy and my achievement is in the progress and development of my students. So there is where I get my greatest joy. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'll emphasize again on 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 another point that you made because um, I remember when um, Mr. Westwick Williams he asked, and I'm just relating it to the parent teacher sorry relationship. Um, right. I remember when I told my mom that she has to collect. There was the year that he said that, well, he's not giving the students the report card. The parents have to come in. And I remember when my mom um, found out that she has she had to go to school to get it. 
she was freaking out because she thought that I got into trouble. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> when he was away of Mr. Westwick Williams to meet the parents and um, explain to them, you know, and, and if we didn't do good, um, they could have, you know, asked the teachers, you know, some questions and stuff like that. So that was yeah. a good thing at, at that time as well. You know, yeah. Yeah. The North Union Secondary School had, had propelled at that time in not only academics, because we were now being recognized by um, from the town schools now, you know, as you know, an official school, if if I should say that, because we were competing, we had like you say, you had hundred percent passes in in integrated sciences, um, other areas, schools would come up and do agricultural um, uh, agricultural um, curriculum at North Union, woodworking, you know, we had. For a school that, that, like I told people, we had everything at North Union. It's one of the only school, if not the only school, that had actually, apart from grammar school, which had the Stony Ground uh, cricket ground, we had our own netball um, court on, on campus. We had our Indeed. own cricket cricket ground, soccer ground. Yeah. No other school, every other school had to go somewhere. And not only that, when it comes to public speaking, no, oh, yes. was right there at the top, you know. Um, if I'm right, it's from 85 or 86, somewhere yeah. around there. We we were top with the school, and, and it's no coincidence, really, that North Union got, you know, won the public speaking twice, and I think we had a third place or a second place after that as well. Um, yeah. yeah. So you, Mr. Jones, you were very instrumental in academics, and like I said, culture the interests of, of the students and stuff like that. Was there a moment be, before that, I know you were the deputy principal, that you 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 thought or imagined that you were going to rise to become the principal of the school? Well, to be honest, even when I was in secondary school, I never, when I heard about university, I was in awe. Mm -hmm. I never even realized that I would have gotten to a university. To me, it was for super superhumans. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up attending attending three. <laughs> okay, now when I went to the North Union Secondary School, you know, as a qualified assistant teacher, I couldn't see myself becoming deputy principal or acting principal. I went there with a spirit of service and dedication. Now, this opportunity came up in 1988, where a scholarship was advertised for an education degree with major in science. Okay, so you had education, science methodology. So I got that scholarship. I studied at, studied at the University of the West Indies. Came back in 1990. And in 1991, the post of deputy was, uh, was advertised. I applied. And there I was. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for that, right, they, they always say, if you're the sweeper, the, the flow sweeper, be the best flow sweeper you can be. If you're Whatever you are, be the best you can be because you just never know, you know, where opportunity will will, will spring from, you know. And for that, I ask, that's why I asked you that question because, um, mm. you know, imagine you were your your interest was somewhere else, and and then the opportunity was here to to grab, and you couldn't grab it because you were ill prepared, you know. Did you have that feeling of you wanted to be somewhere else, like another secondary school or North Union. How did it feel? Did it feel like home? Or... North Union was at my heart, and my heart was at North Union. And up to this day, my heart is still at North Union. I mean, I never for one second felt like being elsewhere. I always felt like North Union, to the point where when I was when I went to my master's in the year 2000, I went to the University of Bristol. I received a letter while I was there, a letter of appointment as a deputy headmaster of the St. Vincent Grammar School. And to be honest with you, it depressed me. 
<laughs> Although at that time, being the deputy headmaster, it was a higher pay grade and seen as more prestigious than being the deputy or the principal of the North Union Secondary School. But there where my heart was. But once I got over that initial depression, I said, life is not what you make it. It is more how you take it. I am a son of the soil. Therefore, I will bloom wherever I am planted. So I focused my attention to the St. Vincent Grammar School, and I just threw myself into it, just as I did at North Union Secondary School, and I had resounding success. Which subject area do you think was your preferred choice um, in the, at the secondary level? I always preferred biology. Biology was my pet subject. And then integrated science. Yes, biology indeed. Right. One statement from you that I, I totally didn't agree with. That. <laughs> We're not going to get into it, but I, I, I don't know if you can remember. I I know you had um, a strong belief in, in evolution at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll always hold you to it. Because <laughs> I think I had a little argument with you on, on, on that. Like, you know, when you, you said, yes, I believe in evolution. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me clear the air on that one, right? <laughs> Less folks don't think that I'm an atheist. Let me clear the air on that one. <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> yeah, so now I still believe in evolution, but not the evolution theory that says we are descendants of the ape and the monkeys and so forth. Okay. I'll tell you I'll tell you evolution in what sense. I think that evolution is God's way mm -hmm. of changing animals into different forms so that they can adapt to the changing environment on earth. It is in that sense that I, and that in itself, is the animals evolving towards adapting to the conditions on earth. But I never for one minute doubted that life started in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. I never doubted that. But what I always maintain is that God did not create, let's say, the butterflies as they are now. We have different species of butterflies. We have different species of monkeys. And if you go in the wild, there are other animals that would have evolved into different forms. And to me, that was God's way of using evolution to create animals in a state that to survive the changing environment that man has done such an injustice to. Well, 30, I waited 30 something years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember, I remember, you remember Elvis Daniel, right? You remember he was very, very religious. Who? And Elvis Daniel. Yeah. May he rest yes. And he came into the lab one afternoon when I was having my biology class because the students told him, Mr. Jones, believe in evolution and I believe in evolution. And Mr. Daniel <laughs> actually came in and sat in the back of my class. Mm. And I dropped it the way I have dropped it there a while ago. I gave that explanation. And Mr. Daniel nodded. <laughs> he was in agreement. <laughs> mm. Yes, but I'm a child of God. I'm a devoted Christian. I you yes, it, it was confusing to me because I know your 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 family. If I'm right, it's your mom. I, I know she was very religious, so it was confusing to me. Like, how could Mr. Jones so educated and and he? I know he believes in God, so how could he give that theory of of evolution? Because I understood it the other way around. Of course, I mean, thirty something years later, I I get to um <laughs> to, to finally better later. <laughs> 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 Sorry, yeah. what did you say? What, yes. what did you say? No, I said that are late, but never. Yes, yes, yes. It's never too late to do the right thing, never too late to say the right thing. Um, yeah. yeah. What advice do you, would you have for, for students um, now? Because, and before you answer, right, you said something earlier on that 
um, you never wanted they thought you would be the principal and, and stuff like that. And I can, again, I'm going to emphasize on that because um, around my time too, going away and study to a university was, it was kind of just dreams, right? Because sometimes, okay. sometimes you're academically there, but your parents don't have the money to send you and you may, you're not as fortunate to get um, scholarships. Now it's a little bit easier. People are getting scholarships and I'm so happy that like on my previous interviews, I, I interviewed a lot of um, um, authors and, and poets and published authors and stuff like that. And I'm so proud. And people, a lot more people are getting their doctorates and stuff like that. And I'm so proud of our educational um, advances that we're making right now because back then, you know, I could have only dreamed of, you know, being a police or, or a, a, a nurse or or a teacher or working working at the bank, and I'm so happy that you know now you're seeing lawyers coming out, and not, not only they're contributing to St. Vincent, but they they're they're working either regionally or internationally. You know, you you get those kind of things. You get professors and and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. the the dream. What what advice would you give to students now, um, who have the opportunity to 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 make something? a lot more better than, than a lot more advanced not better but advanced than us okay now what i would say to them is that there are a lot lots more opportunities available for them dream big grab onto those opportunities make use of them be disciplined in your approach i will forever drum discipline be disciplined in your approach <laughs> Do not put any ceiling on your ability to achieve and to progress. Do not put any ceiling on yourself at all. I'm a living example of where I had a ceiling on myself, but thank God I cracked through that ceiling. I actually outdid my own expectations. <laughs> what is happening now with our education revolution? I don't care what anybody wants to say with bashing that this education revolution. But what I am seeing now is that the kind of opportunities that are available to students, they are not only to fit you to operate within the shores of St. Vincent, but to prepare you to excel elsewhere. Very often our nurses go elsewhere to work and folks are wondering if they had medical training as doctors. You know, because what the nurses are required to do in those countries, our nurses have far exceeded that. Mm -hmm. So that is just one example. So I will say to the students, position yourself, no matter how many opportunities are there. If you do not position yourself by making use of your primary education, your secondary education, and what comes after that, then you cannot make use of the opportunities. You can do it. You have the ability. The opportunities are there. Go for it. And, and one of the things that I would like to see done also is um, to, for, for, to develop a way for students making the transition from primary, the primary level to secondary level. Because I know... I know, and I'm not making any excuses for, for my faults, but I know I didn't have that, that transition um, corrected. I didn't have that um, so-to-called advice coming in from primary because most students, they do natural ability in primary school. They don't study, they don't do anything, natural ability. And you get to the secondary, and it's a little bit more challenging, and then you meet a lot more students who are equipped or who are more um, academically um, inclined to 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 that situation, and you now you're still thinking that you can work on natural abilities. So so sometimes you get stuck right there between that transition where you're not prepared um, psychologically to to handle the secondary um, part of it because you're gonna meet students who not you know you used to be for second and third in primary school, but now you're meeting ten students who used to be that too. You know, and then you fall at the bottom of the table and then you get a little bit discouraged because you think, well, damn, I'm not bright enough anymore. You know, but so, you know, we need to kind of fix or, or bridge that gap there where students can have that crossover because not everyone who um, 
didn't do good in form one is a bad student so um we need to fix that 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 part of it to to prepare for heavier work that that should be coming i am with you on that one 100 percent um so in terms of 30 something years later like for me i i left school and i know for a few people it's it's a lot more than that for some it's less um how would you see a reunion or what advice you have uh, for a reunion? I know you guys as teachers, I heard that you guys tried to get together before and it didn't really work out. You know, um, yeah. how, how do you see a reunion, the, the, the benefits, how we can benefit even the, the, the past students and the, the current student and the school as well? Yeah. Uh, now, one of the benefits I can see from the reunion is to touch the lives of the current crop of students and those who are aspiring to come to the North Union Secondary School. In fact, even though there are some who might not be aspiring to come to the North Union Secondary School, it is a, a way of advertising, selling the school. Because when you have folks coming in who have been successes, I am hoping that at some point, we are going to have a group of groups going into the North Union Secondary School to mix and mingle with the present crop, to give them motivational talks about the, the ranks and files you have come through, the successes you have had, and motivate them. We have so, met, so much pulling down in St. Vincent, and the students being told, you're good for nothing, you could never be like this, and so forth. We need more motivation, and to me, there is nobody better to motivate some our students than who have been there, done that, and have made something of themselves. So I'm hoping that the reunion, apart from meeting and greeting and uh, just recapping on the past days, that it can have a real impact on the current crop of students, and it can impact on other students in the primary school who are hearing about North Union and secondary school but do not know too much about it. Well said, because um, one of the, you may or may not know, one of the um, one of the days for the week, so we have a week of activities that's coming up uh, September 24th to the 30th, which is going to climax with the gala, of course. Um, right. So after the church service on Monday, I, I should send you the schedule that Kiana send you out that schedule. One of it is um, the Monday, we are going to go in and provide some mentorship to the school. Wow. Um, if um, if I have to to get it right, um, for me, like being the, the president of the reunion committee, um, the alumni is um, is we're still working on setting it up, right? right. Um, one of the things I would like to see done as well is um, because I've heard so many stories that I mean I was fortunate to have lunch every day right so but i've heard so many stories of my 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 fellow alumni they didn't have lunch at school they went to school you know hungry and and no one knew about it you know and, 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 except if you're close friends um yeah. one of the things i like to see is that sometimes if the, the their students like i heard stories of one student couldn't go to the the ball his graduation ball because he couldn't afford the ticket you know these things are they're, they're sad because it's it's a, a moment yeah. of your life to be cherished. You, know? you look you look forward <laughs> for it, you know. So um I, I don't want to see that happen anymore, you know. Um the alumni have been um very instrumental in we we just try to contribute a little bit uh for some of the awards that were given out. Some some people came forward and donated. Um right. and we have uh we have a total of it's over 100 and something computers to donate that Monday. But, but okay, no yeah, to, to be ready right now, it's about 90, um, 90 computers, desktop and, and laptops um, to be donated, to be handed over to the school. So I'm hoping that we have right now, we have a, a WhatsApp group of over 230 student, uh, alumni. Okay. And not everybody's coming to the reunion, but at least stayed in the group and it's annoying to stay in the group so i just want to take this opportunity as well to thank those who stayed in the group because it's not easy when you're in a group 
of 230 people and messages are coming in left, right, and center. So by them staying there, it's really yeah. a, a real good sign to 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 embrace, you know. Um, yeah. So like I'm saying, I would like further down the road. I know, um, Mr. Hupito would he has bigger plans as well um, for it. But I know for me, I I would like to see like to know identify if we can identify sometime when a, a student needs help us in terms of um, maybe he doesn't have anything at home to eat. So we we want to establish that mentorship where a student can connect with an alumni, um, yes. with the alumni to, to, to you know, maybe talk things through. Maybe it's a field that he wants to get into, you know? Right. He can he can ask questions and maybe it's just life in general he wants, you know, like a big brother kind of thing, big brother yes. basis kind of thing, you know? So we're hoping that we can establish that kind of um, venture, or, or ignite that kind of energy into the North Union Secondary School because so many people want to give back and it's it's really really good whether through financial and and through other ways you know everyone just wants to make a contribution so that yeah. reunion this reunion it's it's like you said it's about it's about getting together reminisce and stuff like that but it's also see how we can be cohesive as as a unit to to propel the school to to a higher level sometimes we might be selfish and say well, you know, my parents worked hard to send me and why should I? But, you know, it's the giving back in life that really comes, you know. Indeed. So I'm happy Indeed. to mention that part, you know. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Jones, like, you know, like, um, and I'm, I'm saying it one by one to everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're you're also one of our, um, going to be one of our honorary at, at, the, um, at the reunion. You know, um, I just want to leave you with... Um, uh, some of the final words that that you know would would say. I mean, it's not an acceptance speech, but it's just like I said before. Unanimously, it was decided. Mr. Jones has to be on the list of okay. honor. What what um what what is that feeling like right now? Well, I feel honored and at the same time humbled. It is, and I see it as not an achievement of myself, but an achievement fostered by my students and the opportunity offered to me to contribute to their development and to make both the process and the product worthwhile. So that's how I see this honor. Then I thank my students. I have to also thank my fellow teachers, parents, and everyone who contributed to the upliftment and the success of the school. I couldn't do it alone. Well, well said. Like I said again, you know, very elated if I should say that to have you or to have had you as 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 one of our teacher slash mentor. And and if I have to go back again to what you said, with North Union, you have you know um, uh, so many people in so many positions. You know, just too num numerous to mention. We have Mark Ellis at the fire department. We have uh, our branches deputy um, commissioner. We have, like you said, right. Grace Walker, head of the hospital, and right. a lot, lots and lots and lots, lots more of, of North Union product. You know. Indeed. And it's it's a pro it's a pro school to be with like even if you want to say like you're proud to be from I uh, went to Saint Martin's or the grammar school it's for me this is my Saint Martin's and my grammar school like it's it's it was worth every moment of it being at North Union you got a you got piece of everything and you had the equal opportunity to be whatever you wanted to be at North Union Secondary School we have you know been through it all we. In sports, we give we give uh, GHS. We beat them in netball. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, when it comes to public speaking, they were those schools in town. They were afraid of of North Union. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Indeed. and people used to leave. A few people Indeed. left town side to come to North Union as well. We lived our motto: excellence mm -hmm. through unity. Like that, we had you know people who were competing at inter inter secondary school games. You know, who, who went to Dominica? We had the Audi Jack and the Maxwell. 
Dublin and the, you know the, we had the long distance runners, you know, the Carl Lewis. And and like Mr. Johnson was reminding me that when we were doing the music festival, thank goodness I was part of that Candyman choir. We we got we got song of the year or something like that. I didn't even remember that. We got <laughs> song of the year, poetry, drama, you name it, not you name it was yeah, you know. Yes, yes. And there, yeah. there's a choir that let me jump be raised. I remember mm. that one, gold medal, you know, that 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 was highly awarded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's it's just amazing. You know, we had uh, it was such a good um good environment, good good atmosphere, good culture at North Union. So I'm hoping that you know they can surpass those glory days again and 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 you know like Trump say make North Union great again. But <laughs> not to not to diminish anything that um the school is doing right now. I'm pretty sure they're doing great, but we're like, you know. To see it on a higher, higher level still than where it is, you know. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah why don't you tell us uh, where where you at now? I know we know you retired from teaching. Okay. Well, I retired uh, from the post of headmaster at the grammar school in 2013, and then I taught for two years at the pre-college at, at actually community college where students needed like a few more subjects to matriculate to get into the college itself. So there was a pre-college uh, group that I taught for two years. And then I opened my driving school, which I ran for a year. Then in 2017, uh, my wife went to Tortola, BVI, in 2016 as a nurse. And I joined her in 2017 as a science teacher at one of the secondary schools over there. So I served there for four years. And since I returned, I have reopened. Are you looking for a professional driving school? Jones Driving School has what you are looking for. He's reliable, highly professional, competent, and patient. Call now, 7845283519. Jones is right in school, the best. Up to this point, I've had 100% classes at road tests. Because oh. hmm. I do not only teach my students, I mentor them. In addition, I am attached to the community college where when teachers are out in the schools on practical teaching, I go to the schools and do some training, and then when it comes to practical teaching exams, I also go and examine them. So that is yearly on a part-time basis. So I'm still keeping myself busy and still have my fingers in the education sector. Well, well that's good. We know you're still making your contribution to the community. Indeed. And I just want to wish you real success in, in that, you know, Jones is... Uh, Jones is driving school, and if you if you're like fortunate like me, I happen to see it on uh, Facebook as well. Um, maybe you can maybe you can just put uh, tell just say the phone number because it's all about um, making connections, networking, and, and stuff like that. So um, if you can uh, just just tell them uh, tell the folks the phone number. Where they can right. Reach. So the phone number is one seven eight four five two eight three five one nine, and my motto is success guarantee. <laughs> They'll hold you to it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or money, or money back. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you see, I guarantee success, so I have never had to refund. <laughs> 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 well, that's, a, that's, that's a good one you know, that's not negotiable because you're going to be successful <laughs> so I have to try to be successful right <laughs> mm -hmm. so anyway I'm, I'm looking forward and, and that's why I want to tell folks again when you come to the gala you come to the reunion activities you're not just coming to meet the students you're going to get we have 10 teachers on the on the honorary list Um, you get to mingle with the teachers and you know Pick their brains now, because you're, you're adults now. You can you can question them now. <laughs> you can question Mr. Jules, why why did you kick me out of the class, or why did you give me lines? And 
Uh, he may not remember, yeah. but you know, it's a time to reminisce and laugh about it, and you know, and have a yes, good time. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward. Yeah. So, oh man, it's a, it's a joy. It's a pleasure linking up with you again. It was a pleasure to conversate with you. I, I, you know, I don't want to talk everything off because I have my set of talking to talk at reunion to either to meet when I meet you guys. You know, when I meet you guys, and, you know. Um, it's just amazing, though, because whenever I'm here talking about reunion, I think it's my passion for it. Um, I get to, I, I laugh a lot, I smile a lot, not, a lot, not smile, laugh. I really laugh a lot because it just right. brings me back to, to you know, 30-something years ago, you know. Um, and it's my, I think it's my, my passion, uh, but I think I'm the most passionate one <laughs> for, for reunion. Yeah. You do an awesome job, man. You do an awesome job. Hey, yeah. So yeah, yeah. thanks. I, I I hope uh I hope everyone you know who's gonna listen to this will you know have the drive, have the urge to um to to join us you know in this venture because like as you know when I, I heard that a lot of schools tried and they never gotten this far you know like they they've had like class little class reunion and stuff like that but never really a school reunion. So yeah, this is, yeah, this is very historical for North Union Secondary School as well, and yeah. you know I'm hoping uh, leading up to it that you know folks will gravitate towards it and more folks will buy into it. You know, come on down and support. And and what we're asking for is sometimes you say, well, nobody from my era is not there, but it's up to you to bring the people you know, the people who you hang out with um, during school days. You of can course. bring them, yeah, bring them along and, and have a laugh and have a talk, you know. One more thing, I don't want to end on a somber note, right? But mm -hmm. uh, just to mention, there are a few of our really good and outstanding teachers who have passed, like Elvis Daniel, Colin Hagen. Mm -hmm. if, the, if you can recognize them, probably with a moment of silence during mm -hmm. one of our events. You know? Yeah, definitely. Mr. Elvis Daniel was also on the list. And, ah. he and he didn't even make it to see his award. And for that also me, I'm personally motivated and determined to have this reunion because look at Mrs. Jackson and, and he would like to say and right, right, a lot right. of people you don't you don't want to pass or miss that opportunity to say thank you when they're gone. You, you know what I mean? We can talk and, and go on and on and on. Not only that, there are some students like who didn't even make it to 50. You know what I yeah. mean? And yes. it's, you know, when you look at that, sometimes you ask about, I remember one year I asked for a certain person. Oh, she died three years ago. You know, like, okay. it, it, it's just, you know, so it's time to, for us to get together and, and you know, have a good time and stuff like that. So one of the things was to have, um like, a, like I think it's the day of the gala to just have, like, one section. We mentioned their names, those who mm. passed on, and, and have, like, a candle visual, like one candle for each person, you know. One for yeah. one and, and stuff like that. So um initially we would have loved to like pass on some kind of recognition, something to their families, but it's it was a little bit too much. Maybe in the next um maybe when we have a next uh, reunion maybe in two or five years, we will see what we can right. do concerning that, you know. So yeah. but yes, thank you for, for bringing that up uh, as well. You know, it, there's a lot that's that's that that that's behind the scenes that, that are really gonna happen that that we don't really put it on. Not that we don't put it out, but sometimes when we have meetings, so we always um, encourage people to you know send put questions in the chat. You know, right. of what we want. People do give their um two cents about you know what we should do and stuff like that. So you right. know, hopefully, if everything is not done in this one, it's a stepping stone to make things better for, for the next coming um, gathering. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and also, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy that you guys are around, that we can lean on for advice and, and stuff like that as to, you know, some stuff that we can do together. Like I said, again, cohesive, you know, as a unit to uh, to make things happen because I know you guys still wish the best for, for us, even those of us who are adults, you still Wish the best for, for all of us. Of course, no one always. Thank you again for the, your time, the opportunity to reminisce. 
from a from a teacher student level, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to 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 meet you again in flesh, you know, in the flesh. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So thank you very much. It was really a pleasure. Yes, yes. A few more days I'll be in Vincilan and I can't wait.